Here we are. All right, good morning. Good Happy morning, Saturday, everybody. everybody. Woo -hoo. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. Here we are. It's our live. We are live, and if you're joining us, thank you for being here. And uh, Or if you're watching the replay, thank you as well, because we're going to be talking about seed sowing a little bit today. Yeah, I've got some fun stuff to talk oh, about today. Oh, so many seeds we want to sow. Yeah, and we're going to talk about also uh, using uh, jugs, water jugs, and different things to sow seeds. There seems to be a trend. Yeah, this is um, a huge trend. So it's pretty cool. We're going we're gonna to show you how we would do it, um, and then uh, maybe it'll give you some ideas and uh, you can go do it yourself too. Yeah, like so, supplies needed and stuff. Yeah, so um, we're so, Sean and Allison. Yeah, Sean and Allison, Spoken Garden, and uh, we're here to help you make a help. We're here to help make you a better gardener. And uh, I haven't had enough coffee yet. I know, especially me neither. you know. Uh, make sure to have some coffee or tea with you because it's Saturday morning. Why not? Well, and plus, like neither of us slept very well, and the last few nights we've been just. Yeah, have you guys done that where you just yeah. toss and turn all night? Yeah. So it's been kind of like blah in the morning. Is it the bit. planet alignments? I have no idea. It might be. Is it other reasons? I don't know. Okay. I don't know what it is. We but won't I go into I want to have a full night's sleep. Oh, no, a nap sounds good. A nap sounds nice. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So live on Saturdays, 9 a.m. A um, couple things we wanted to tell you about too. Yeah. Oh, oh, well, um, we have something free for you that we offered yes. last week for the yes. first time. Yes. And I threw it in the chat. So it's pinned right at the top. It's a free garden planning guide, or I guess we're, uh, it's a garden idea book. And the, the thought behind this was, A, we have tons of planning to do, and there's lots of templates for you to use that we've used before that help us kind of plan and just get ready for the year ahead. Mm -hmm. And then B, it's also like an idea book. So there are a lot of new gardeners this year. There are a lot of people that just want to expand their gardens. Mm -hmm. and. We have a whole idea book section of different trends this year to look for. Yep, multiple different ways to improve your garden space. And so um, you can see up there on the screen, that's, that's the front of the garden planning idea book there. Now also, here's the table of contents. And it's so cool because uh, we started out with um, letting you know just some quick tips about gardening. You know, what you can do in your garden, how to get some stuff done pretty fast. Um, then also uh, a little bit about how to know your soil. And then we get into, you know, getting into your garden style and your inventory in your garden and then generating ideas, get into some goal setting because you need to be able to do that. You got to know why you're doing what you're doing and why you're doing it. That's very important. And then uh, there's some design space, a uh, couple ideas for that, but then also like graph paper. You need something to draw on right. and like jot your ideas down on. And then there's a few other pages after that uh, to let you know a little bit about us and also our book coming out this March. So we wanted to make sure we threw that out there. Again, this is free. You need to go to spokengarden.com forward slash garden idea book, all one word, and that'll take you to the landing page where you can uh, get signed up to get this uh, downloaded uh, on any device that you have. Yeah, you know, this kind of, there's so many reasons we created this, like like we kind of mentioned. Um, if you're if you're just joining us, I used to be a middle school teacher and I used to create a lot of graph or templates and things for my students to use. And goal setting is such a big part of it. And a lot of people are like, eh, I don't want to set goals. But often if you don't set it, write it, you know, really make a plan, you're not going to achieve it. So yeah. that was something that I talked to my students about every year, you know, just setting personal and, you know, goals for their learning. And it, it was very successful. It was fun to watch them evolve through the year. Totally. Yeah. yeah I can see I that would be that. so useful. And yeah, guys, you got to be able to write down and have a clear sense of what you want to do and how you want to do it. And this planning idea book is perfect for that. I, I mean, it so. really is. Yeah, we hope. So, yeah. yeah. So we're excited, if you can't tell. Yeah. Um, it is free. It's up in the chat at the very, it's pinned at the top. Um, those of you joining us in the replay, we'll make sure that you have access to this in the description as well. Yep. And also, uh, spokengarden.com forward slash garden idea book. So, last, yeah. last time I'll say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Done with that. Now, we hope it's helpful. Now, a couple <laughs> other. Um, uh, what's it uh, announcements here so we've got our book um, and that's coming out March 9th we wanted to put this back up here because you know it's coming out and if you pre-order it this is so cool if you pre-order it you get two bonuses Yay. Um, they're free they come with the book you got to send us your proof of purchase by email and we'll take care of that um, uh, if you email us we'll send these bonuses to you and um, one of them is a 60 plus page uh, spring planted bulbs for fantastic summer color. I mean, this book goes over 21 different uh, spring planted bulbs 
that grow in a wide range of zones and it gives you all the information on how to care for them, um, a lot of different information on, um, on how to use them. It's just a great book and it's just 21 different bulbs and so that's a great uh, gift right there. And then there's the bonus, when you buy the book, there's also Dig Deeper um, uh, breakout uh, pieces that you can go to online that we're still building, but it's coming right along. And it's called Dig Deeper. And you'll basically get into more detail, digging deeper into specific things that we call out in our book to help you become a better gardener. Yeah, I, I could, you couldn't have said it better. I think everything is, we're, we're excited just to get this out. This is our very first book ever. Um, we put our heart and soul into it and it's for everybody. It does call out the first time gardener because there is a lot of information for brand new or maybe mm -hmm. fairly new gardeners, but there's information for everybody, I think. Yep. And you can always learn new things. I mean, even, even me with my education, even Allison with her education, even going over uh, some of the old material, the basics, with a new lens, with a new view, you can always learn new things. I, I learned so. a ton just listening to Sean and having him teach me about the things we were we were working on. So it was great. So that's available on Amazon or anywhere else you buy your books. You can go to SpokenGarden.com forward slash SG books and that'll give you all the links to either Amazon or other online book retailers. So there's that. So enough about our stuff. Yeah. We want to highlight okay. a friend of ours because she is amazing. She's Her name awesome. is Susan Mulvihill. Hey, Susan. And she has a brand new book coming out as well. Yeah. Here's her book. She is so cool, you guys. We have learned so much from her. And she wrote a book called The Vegetable Garden Pest mm -hmm. Handbook. But she wants to really emphasize that it's it can also translate and like carry over to flower gardening. Mm -hmm. Totally, yeah. Because part of growing any vegetable is still growing it to get it to flower, then to get it after it flowers, to produce in some crops, not all crops, but some crops, that actual fruit. So you, you need to get the plant up and going past its flowering stage to get that fruit in a lot of cases. Yeah. And it's, so there, there's a lot of crossover um, for her book and her book is awesome. It I mean, looks she, awesome, we're so excited. Yeah, she calls out a lot of different things. It's it's a great handbook to figure out, oh, what's eating my pest? Oh, what's, what's eating the, or sorry, you said what's eating my what, pest? What's eating my pest? <laughs> <laughs> what's Hopefully eating my a beneficial fruit? insect. What, what's yeah, right? What what's eating my vegetables? What's eating the leaves? How, why is it getting eaten down to the ground on the stem? Her book goes through all of that and covers so much for so many different crops. So many different. She like identifies specific insects yep. and like what to look for. So um, you can find her. She has a great YouTube channel, oh, yeah. you guys. So it's at Susan's in the Garden. You can find her everywhere pretty much, but Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, you can pre-order her right now. Her book comes out in April. Yes. So it's yes, coming yes. up. Yep. And again, if you, if you didn't see it here on the screen, the Vegetable Garden Pest Handbook. And she also has bonus material available, yeah. which we haven't heard about yet, but we'd be really interested to know about. So we're going to dig into that and see what that is because we're probably going to get her book. I will definitely get I her mean, book. I believe know. the bonus material has to do with, um, yeah. it's, it's exclusive content about her best vegetable growing practices oh, and whatnot. So like okay, tips cool. and her best, you know, she's been gardening for years. Oh yeah. She's so, a pro. She's a pro. She's over in um, zone six, I believe. Yep. She's out of Spokane, yeah. Washington. So, so cool. Yep. So, all right. Yay, Susan. Yay, Susan. Okay. Cool. So enough about books. We love to read. Books this is the perfect books. time of year to read, right? I mean, we've got seed catalogs everywhere. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of um, learning going on right now, mm -hmm. probably for you too. Yeah, and you know what? Um, before we dive into some of these things, these other things we're going to talk about today, uh, what do you got going on in your garden right now? Tell us in the chat. Yeah, are I'd you, love to hear it too. Are you looking at seeds? Are you buying seeds? Are you sowing seeds? Which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, what are you doing? And which so, seeds? Yeah, there you go. Flowers, vegetables. Um, mm -hmm. What specifically are you excited to grow this year? Yeah. Or have already started? Yeah, let us know in the chat. We want to hear from you. So, um... Yeah, we're, we've got seed sowing on the mind, oh, right? Yeah. Because, I mean, it's, it's getting so close to... Well, not super close. We're still about 50 plus days out from spring or something like that, but... <laughs> You, you just start getting, you know, you want to get out in your garden and do something. And for a lot of you that might have snow on the ground, this is like perfect time for you to start things indoors. Yeah. So totally. that's an option. Yeah. And so, you know, and if you've been following us for a while, or even like the last week, you've probably picked up on that we like to plan ahead. <laughs> kind of far like ahead. And so we're planting seeds now for the early spring. And we've got some uh, seeds out there. It's called winter seed sowing, which we did last week in one of our videos. And we're going to talk about that today. 
Yeah, we got some things started and we're probably going to do more today and through the next uh, few days. Well, probably for a while, right? Until yeah. we won't run out of room again. I think, I think we're running low on soil too. So. Oh, we need to get some soil and vermiculite. We're out of vermiculite. Yeah. That's on our list. So, but hey, you know, there's, oh, a, there's always more to plan. I know, there's always, see, we need to plan our Amazon card apparently. Oh, we have an Amazon card. We do. <laughs> you always have my name <laughs> so uh, why uh, okay so you think of seed sowing they need a certain temperature to germinate or whatnot so how is winter seed sowing possible winter seed sowing is possible because uh, plants have evolved over time to and we've helped in that evolution in the selective evolution of plants to be able to have them germinate in really cool temperatures you know 40 40 degrees uh, is like the minimum of a lot of these uh, these cold season crops that you, you know we call them cold season crops because they'll grow in the colder times of year whether that's in the spring the early spring or, or even late winter or in late fall you know fall into winter so cool. um yeah it, it's crazy to think about but over time you know um our, our climate has changed our habits have changed and um, like a lot of people we want that nutrition we wanted that nutrition over hundreds and hundreds maybe thousands of years and we've selected over time the plants that will still grow in those really cool temperatures and germinate and then produce the food that we want. And so that's basically the premise of cold season crops. That's, that's where they kind of come from. That's pretty cool. I mean, I always think of cold season crops being like some of the hardier greens, you know, like different lettuces, like spinach, exactly. kale. Yep, exactly. But there's a lot of other things you can grow. Yeah. I mean, there's flowers we can start right now, yep. which we have actually. Yeah. There's perennials you can grow, um, there's annuals you can grow. And so yeah, we've we've started some of those. We have. So we want more. <laughs> we need soil. So yeah. So there's different um, methods, right, of like seed sowing. Um, if you're low on space, there's certain ways you can do it. If you have, excuse me, if you have a small greenhouse like we do, you mm -hmm. know, there's a different way to do it. And then there's things you can do outside. Yeah, yeah. So before we get into some of those different methods. Uh, something you want to keep in mind is you need to make sure that when you're sowing a lot of these seeds, not all of them, because each plant's different, even through cultivars like lettuce or radishes or anything, they do have their differences. But in general, general rule of thumb, thumbs up, we like thumbs up, um, have, a, have your lowest temperature only go down to about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And so um, that's because a lot of the seeds, a lot of the plants that we're planting right now for winter sowing, they need a minimum temperature of 40 degrees Fahrenheit to germinate. And that needs to be a daytime temperature. Um, the more constant it is, the better it's gonna be, the better your germination is, and the better your survival rate will be. But that's a general rule of thumb. Um, if the temperature's higher, that's good. That's great. Um, so, and make sure to read those seed packets. Make sure to know what the specific seeds needs are. And uh, check your zoning check and see if this plant will grow outside in your zone yeah. or does it need to be grown fully inside you know just some considerations to know yeah definitely plan ahead right yeah plan ahead have a plan yep because so, i mean i i'm like i just want to grow everything right now but i know that that's not a good idea yeah some things you can try try whatever you want but know that some plants um they're not going to be able to germinate uh with uh, really cold temperatures uh, you'd be surprised there's a lot of plants that won't germinate below like 60 or 65 degrees because it's just they've evolved that way um, So you just need to be aware of what you're growing and how you're growing it. now the fun part of, about a lot of this is is um, The seeds that we're gonna go over today that we actually planted a lot of them grow in like partial shade Which is super cool because you think no vegetables. Oh, they need full Sun, right? They need all that sunlight to to grow and you know, uh, produce all of those those crops and that fruit and what you want to eat. And, but really, there's there's quite a few plants out there that you can grow in partial shade, maybe even full shade. So um, again, just do your homework a little bit here, a little yeah. bit there. Read those seed packets. Uh, get on those seed catalog uh, websites and uh, dig in because it's fun. Because it is fun, and we have botanical interest in front of us here, Baker Creek. Oh, yeah. um, been looking at Seed Savers Exchange, so and there's so many others. Don't Park forget, seed. yeah, Park Seed Territorial Seed Company. Um, they've been around for years. So I heard a rumor that they might have something to do with Monsanto, though. I hate to, I shouldn't have even said that online. I don't know. But so I'm kind of like, eh. but yeah. there's local seed companies probably in your area oh, yeah. too. Seed, that would be, seed Savers. Yeah, dot, Seed Savers. Dot org. Yep, seed Savers. Right all over org. They are awesome. All heirloom seeds. Super cool. That's so cool. Yeah. There's so many companies. So, 
And another fear that I have, and maybe some of you have, is that everybody is so anxious about seeds, they're mm -hmm. buying everything up and things are selling out. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of seed companies that have shut down their website overnight and yep. longer because they can't keep up with all the orders. Yep. So for me, that causes me a lot of anxiety <laughs> because I'm like, I'm not, you know, we're still kind of, I guess, I almost feel like we're a little bit behind on kind of getting these orders out. Right? Yeah. But well, it's going to be what it's going to be. I mean, th there are a lot of seed companies out there and... That's um, so true. You know, so there's a lot of options. And so the fun thing is, is that if you've done this in years past, like last year you had all these seeds um, that you sown and uh, you had some seed left over, use those seeds yeah. from last year. They're perfectly viable. They're not going to be as viable as last year, but they'll still work uh, to a point. So you might as well try and, um, try and sow them. I mean, otherwise they're just... Their viability over time degrades. And so year after year, it goes down in percentage points. And so um, you need to make sure that you use the seed. And what a better way to do it than just get out there and plant it. That's kind of our plan right now, right? Because yep. we're using a lot of seeds that we had last year. And, you know, we'll see what happens, but they yep. should be okay. Yep, and we'll, but we'll we can't see. wait to get those new seeds. I know. Real quick <laughs> in the chat, want to say hi to a couple people who've jumped in. Real Genie. Hey, Real Genie. Good morning. Good morning. Happy to see you here. And Andrea B., thank you for being here. Hi, Andrea. And I love her. She just started petunias and lots of snapdragon seeds on her windowsills. Cool. Um, wow. So that's All awesome. Right. Good for you. What zone are you in, Andrew? Oh, yeah. Because that's always fun to know. Yeah, yeah. And then she said she would love to see us experiment on some snapdragon cuttings this summer. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah that's, that's interesting. You know, we yeah. have this beautiful snapdragon. And now, of course, I want more snapdragons. I'm going to be looking for those. But mm -hmm. um, we have this beautiful one that we started um, in this past week. And mm -hmm. we see. have had this yep. packet for a while. We forgot to start them last year. Yeah, kind of kind of got put to the wayside there. We, I know. Uh, we got busy. Yeah. And then it was like summer. And we're like, well... Yeah. This probably isn't going to be the best time to start yeah. them. So. Interesting. Taking cuttings from yeah. snapdragons. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can come up with. That's a great idea. Kind of like cool. our petunia cuttings, which we still have a few oh, that we're tending to right yes, now, which yes. we kind of lost a few of those, though. Yeah. They didn't survive. We had them inside, and then we moved them out, and they didn't yeah. really... Well, somebody forgot about them <laughs> out in the rain, in the cold, oh, cold, cold rain, yeah, and everything got hit, and... Uh, that yeah. person is uh, sorry about that. Oopsie. So, I think we yeah. maybe have one or two that made it. Yeah. Plus, there's been some some issues. We we just we're just getting through some issues of uh, aphids. So yeah, you guys made aphids in our greenhouse. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's not that unusual, but we think they came in with winter? some store bought plants that we also put in there to overwinter. So yeah, yeah, that was a huge bummer. We're still treating those right now um, with just like some water and soapy, just soapy water. Yeah. Okay. solution but uh, yeah it's too bad but hey really too bad you know with, with cuttings and doing all this uh, germination and propagation there's going to be attrition you're going to lose plants through attrition yeah. and different things that are out of your control or that you might have been able to do better but um it's okay it it's happens. an experiment yep. right yep. but i don't know about you guys but we're out there every day like what's growing what's going on <laughs> like we literally sow seeds um what day was that tuesday, tuesday. i believe this yep. previous tuesday yep. and every day we're out there like they've grown yet they've germinated yeah some of them like, are five to seven days seven to ten days to germinate i know so they could be some of the lettuces might be ready we'll have to go yeah, check today. super excited so <laughs> we'll be there yeah. oh good morning sherry oh. nice. thank you for being here morning, sherry um let's talk about we're like way off topic here. way off well not but not too bad what so. we thought might be fun is just to talk about some different ways of actually sowing seeds and maybe some of you try this and this is like I mean, like kind of a no duh, but it's fun to talk about and just kind of get out there. It really is. So one of the ways we usually sow is just using these seed trays, right? Mm -hmm. Some of you have seen these. We um, found these last year. Just this, we wanted this exact length, and we just use these little what a pony pack little. I grew up calling them pony packs. Uh, industry pony packs. Yeah, they're like cell trays. Little cell, cell packs. Yeah, seed yeah. cells. Yeah. So, so we have a lot of these left over from last mm -hmm. year, which we're super happy about. We mm -hmm. just washed them out last year and just kind of. Yep. Kept them all, of course. Yep. So we're excited for these because this fills up. I mean, you can fill so many things. Sometimes you have double seeds germinating in one little cell. Or so. triple. Or triple. <laughs> sometimes they're tiny and you yeah. can't get them out of your hand. You can't, can't literally control how many come out of your hand when you're moving your hand. The seeds are tinier than they're a tiny. pinhead like of those a, lettuce seeds a are pin. Tiny. Yep. So um, how many of you sow this way? We were curious because this is a pretty common, you know. Yep. And you might have like a smaller seed tray that fits maybe like Maybe half. Like Andrea, like on a windowsill or... Yep. Because that would be... We don't have a lot of indoor light at all. No, we would totally start stuff inside if we yeah. could. We need an atrium. We need a sun. Well, we need a space for grow lights too, right? We won't, We don't have... Yeah. 
do that somewhere. I don't know. Yeah. That's there's hard no, to set up. There's no room in the garage. Yeah, we do not have room. People use garages. People use closets. People use uh, washrooms and mud rooms. I mean, all any di any different space you can use if you want to start seeds and use grow lights on like a rack or a shelf. You know, it's whatever space you have available. I know, right? So, I know. If we had some room in our garage, I think mm -hmm. we would probably oh, try totally that. Would. Kind yeah. of experiment with that. Got to clean bit. the bench off. Yeah, but. we've got a lot of stuff. <laughs> we have all our dahlia bulbs in there right now because we're yep. moving all of those to a different location. So we had to dig everything up. Because yep. normally we don't have to dig those up here. Nope. Nope, we don't. They overwinter here. So. They're kind of taking up some space. But Yeah, so that's one method. That's one method. Seed trays with uh, potting soil. Where did I put that? Oh, there it is. Cool. Okay guys, so you might have seen out there, there's this trend going around where people are using uh, water jugs, gallon jugs, or milk jugs, or anything they can get their hands on that's a clear plastic or kind of an opaque plastic, but the sunlight still can come through. And they're literally cutting these uh, in half or uh, cutting pieces off to put soil inside, put the seeds in, sow them inside, and then put this top back on. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's a yeah. fun. It's a fun way to do it, and uh, uh, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but um, a lot of different things to use. This is what we have available right now. I know we and don't have. We don't drink a lot of milk at all. Yeah. We don't drink any, so we don't have that size jug. Yeah. We want to yeah. look around, see if anybody has some. But even if you have something like this, if you don't have a milk jug or a gallon yeah. jug or whatever, even if you have something like this, this is perfectly fine. This will work, and. Uh, what you what you're doing is uh, in sense is you're creating mini greenhouses or little cold frames greenhouses that th they basically have their own environment in them. You're you're putting the soil in. You're adding water every so couple of days, whatever the plants need after they germinate or to get them to germinate, and then after they germinate. But the the water you put holes in it, it's draining out just like a regular environment, just yeah. like even like in our greenhouse or somewhere where you're growing your plants. But with this dome shape, you're creating more of a greenhouse where any sunlight that hits this, it'll heat this up. It generates heat and retains that heat. And then um, the plants are in their own little micro environment to then uh, germinate and, and grow and you've got brand new plants. So um, it's really cool. It's a great concept yeah. if you have mini greenhouses where you can set them out. We were really inspired. We've been hearing about this for the last couple mm -hmm. years, but we've never tried it. And yeah. We, uh, we were really inspired by our friend Susan's in the Garden, which we talked about her book earlier. Right. Um, Learn to Grow, Masilla, another friend of ours, we watched her video, which was great. Yeah. Um, and then Garden Answer did this yeah, recently. Garden so it's, it. They've it's, all had yeah. great videos on these. And so uh, each one of them is a little bit different, but uh, the concept is, is the same. And uh, if you want, um, should, we, should we go over what we're going to do with this? Just show them how we Yeah, do I think it. so. I, okay. I, I mean, this is not big enough. <laughs> Like we need more space. It'll work. I want more flowers. We, we but this will be this will be all right. We would need a couple of these to really do what we want to do. Maybe like a whole case of them, but that's a lot of plastic too. So yeah. yeah. So basically, what you want to do is is you want to have. Oh my god, my knife here. Um, you want to cut this so you have like a soil, a soil reservoir, kind of like a pot or um, one of those seed trays. You want to have enough soil in here for the plant after it germinates to then grow roots down, cool. establish itself, and then have enough. Uh, soil there to anchor it and then gather the nutrients and water to then push up and support the plant on top, right? That's how plants work. So basically what you would do is if it was me, I would cut this just below halfway. I'm just going to do this real quick and try and be, it's going to be noisy. So, and then you just, just go through and cut it, but don't cut all the way through. Leave, you know, see in those other videos uh, on those other channels. Leave a little uh, little hinge there so it, you can close it and it's just like, you know, so isn't that cool? Isn't that neat? So basically you do that and then what you'll do is you'll fill you'll fill this up with some uh, with some soil or whatever potting mix you're using, whatever material you're mm -hmm. using. Don't fill it up all the way though because you want that lip. Just like, uh, just like planting in uh, these seed trays or planting in any container out in your garden, you want to leave a space between the top of this container or our uh, our seed tray or whatever you want to call this, um, the jug, leave a space here of about an inch or two so the water, you can water it and the water doesn't flow over with the soil and seeds out or whatever, it doesn't displace anything. So it'll create like a little reservoir here to fill it up with water and then stop watering, let the water filter through and then keep watering until you get the whole soil, pro soil profile uh, wet. So make sure not to fill this all the way. 
And then I didn't do this before, but you want to make sure you have uh, holes in the bottom. Yeah, totally. And so this is a little bit. Ooh, yeah, it might be better if I. Maybe just say we'll yeah. do that first next time. Uh, for something like this, you don't have to use a knife. You can use a screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, and just punch holes, yeah. and that'd be a lot safer than using the knife. So, but yeah, so get your. And then maybe. Oh. Okay. Well, um, so uh, was it um, drain holes for the water, soil, sow your seeds, and then water them in. And then what you'll do is you'll just close this up like this, bring, bring the top back up off that hinge, tape this. Yeah. So you seal this off. And so what that's going to do is, is it'll, it'll make sure that uh, any type of heat going on in here and uh, air exchange going on, it's all going to go on through here. It's not going to come out here, mm -hmm. and you're creating that greenhouse effect. And so clear tape's good. Duct tape's okay too. I mean, you'll you'll hear from some of those other people uh, from the other ch uh, garden channels out there. Duct tape, they'll talk about duct tape. Yeah, that's but fine. packaging tape's good too because it lets more light through. So that's cool. So then um, when you do this, you know that's done. Don't put the top back on. Leave it off because you want to have that air exchange. You want to make sure that uh, oxygen's coming out, CO2's going in and um, the plants are respiring uh, and they're staying healthy. And so it'll be open to the weather because you're, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this and you're more than likely gonna put it outside. Now, you can put it inside a greenhouse to make sure that it's, uh, it's protected from the cold temperatures or put it outside depending on how comfortable you are with it and how uh, adventurous you wanna be in your experiment <laughs> with these. So, but yeah, um, just go ahead and set it down and then leave it and it should be fine. Now, if it's outside, it's gonna get the regular water from you know any rain or snow or whatever, and that's perfectly fine, that's good. And that'll make the plants a lot hardier and you're gonna have really strong plants I know, I love at that. the end of that, isn't that cool? I wanna do cone flowers, I think, and maybe black-eyed Susans, just get those going. Yeah, Would that be great. okay to do yeah, now? I think so, sure. I mean, we're supposed to sow those anyway in uh, late winter, early spring. Yeah, that's so. kind of perfect. So, and that's direct sowing outside. Yeah, it was just, okay, so. we had a great question just a oh, second cool. ago. Stromy53, hi. Hi, Stromy. Um, what seeds can be direct sowed now outside so we don't have to, that don't have to be worried about inside? Does that make sense? Like, mm -hmm. what can be direct sowed outside right now? Right now, depending on your zone. Yeah, I know, um, it's so zone dependent. Yeah, you need to make sure that you're checking your zones and the hardiness of those plant seeds. Uh, before you direct sow, but I mean here in zone 8B, I mean we could um, We could do poppies yeah, right we, now. Well, and we already did actually we did. this past fall So and we can do black-eyed Susans. Of course, we're talking flowers here. We haven't even got to the veggie list, but black-eyed Susans. Yeah, black-eyed Susans. Cone flowers. Um, cone flowers. Um, Maybe snapdragons? Could we yeah, do those outside right now? We could, but we need to we would need to wait a little bit further uh, closer to spring um, Just to make sure that it doesn't get too cold because um, we're still in our cold season right here. I mean, this is kind of a colder time of year. And in years past, a couple years past, it's actually gone through almost the whole winter until about February, and then all of a sudden we get dumped yeah, we always get with snow. snow. Yeah. I mean, and it's like thick. I mean, it, didn't, it, it hasn't done that in a long time. Well, I mean, we both grew up around here, so we remember our winters, you know, January into mm -hmm. February, even into March, lots of snow. And then all of a sudden it stopped for like, I don't know, 15, 20 years, and now all of a sudden we're getting it back. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of interesting. Like plan accordingly. A yeah, so, so make sure, uh, check the Farmer's Almanac at almanac.com. That's really a good source for uh, getting the forecast for your local area. Mm -hmm. And also your extension agencies. They're gonna have some really good information about um, specific things to sow out in your garden this time of year, or late winter, early spring, so. I mean, because we're ready to do it. We could probably do a few of those things, and including yeah. vegetables, right? Because we're going to get some other, some more things started. Yeah, the vegetables we would want to do inside right now because we still don't know how far out the uh, the, the freezing's yeah, going to go on. So one thing that you can do, excuse me here, <laughs> got, a, got a dripper. <laughs> um, one thing that you want to keep in mind too is that you want to sow your seeds outside when the soil is workable, if it's frozen, all you're doing, all you're gonna do is throw the seed down on top of like ice, frozen soil, and it's just gonna sit there. And That's true. Um, it'll be open to be eaten by all the critters, including birds. Birds love seeds, by the way, if you didn't know that. And um, so, yeah, so if the soil's not workable, if it's frozen on top, even just the first couple layers, don't sow your seeds yet. Um, okay. Because it's just not gonna get down past that frozen part of the soil, in the soil, to then start germinating and get all the moisture and stuff. 
if the water's if water's frozen in the soil, there's no there's not really a lot of available water yeah, that for the seed sense. to then bring in and germinate. So again, so make sure the the soil is workable. I love that question because that's totally something I would have asked too. Mm. Just, what can we do right now? Like I don't want to wait inside. I just want to get him out. I know. Spring, get spring, spring. Um, and uh, Sherry had a great tip. Um, for these, cool. so put maybe like if we have some gauze or something, maybe to keep pests out. Oh, so that's okay. a possibility. That's true. And also make sure and mark what we're growing. Yes, <laughs> we, good idea. Yes, write it down. <laughs> we get so ahead of ourselves. We like so. All, in yeah. fact, it happened last year. We had to wait till things flowered because we couldn't remember what was what. Oh yeah. You know, sometimes yeah. you're really organized and you set all the best intentions, and then other times you're running later. You're in a hurry, yeah. and then you forget what this whole tray is. Yeah, we do it every year. Sometimes uh, surprises are good and sometimes they're not so good. <laughs> <laughs> so good, good tip. And Stromy53, thank you for your compliment. Uh, great job with your well edited to the point videos. Oh, thank you. Really appreciate thank you. that. We appreciate we're, it. We're trying to work hard and get better. Editor in chief. Well, right I'm, ugh, there's a lot to learn, but we're, we're always wanting to just do better for you guys and just get content to you that is relevant and yeah, more succinct. Hopefully just trying to get useful. better all the time. Yep. So I love that. Thank you. Um, yeah, so okay, we've covered different um, types of or different methods of two types. sowing seeds. Oh, and then direct sowing. And we direct just, sowing, we just talked about that. Well, the workable soil. Yeah. Um, and uh, check the seed packet and see if it's, uh, if it's a good time to do it according to what the seeds needs are and your zoning. And then also double check with either Farmers Almanac. Uh, dot com and or your local extension agency because they're going to have a lot of good information. Yeah, so like there's those three tips. Yeah, really good. You know, you could, could you possibly like sew in containers, just kind of move them if needed? Like that's sure. another option. It's yeah. a little heavier, but yeah, that, that's that's a great way to do it. Totally. I guess, yeah, but that's great. Yeah, um, it could kind of get around the whole like we don't have room inside, so yeah. I don't know. You have to bring them in every day though. Every yeah, day. if the temperatures are too low, yeah, you would. Um, the other thing is, is that that's a great idea for uh, <laughs> if you push the envelope a little bit. Well, a little bit, yeah. But you also, if you have a confined space, like you live in an apartment, or you live or just balcony, yeah. yeah if you live great. anywhere where you don't have a lot of space, or a greenhouse, or something else to sow your seeds in, if you don't even have space for this, yeah, use containers. It's a great use of space. Mm -hmm. So we have yeah. a lot of containers, definitely. Cool. So um, good luck to you on your winter seed sowing. We would love to hear from you still. I love, thank you everybody for jumping in on the chat. And oh, cool. uh, we want to hear what you guys are sowing. We heard petunias and snapdragons. Yes, yes. That reminds me, Super we should awesome. do petunias too. Um, and yeah, what else? Are you guys looking into sowing a bunch of veggies or flowers or kind of a mix of both? Yeah. That's kind of where we're at. We're, we're still kind of getting getting going on that. Yeah. So far, let's see, we, we sowed lettuce, uh, spinach, chard, what else did we do? Mustard. We did mustard greens. Snapdragons. And sweet peas. Sweet That's peas. another one. Oh, yeah. Oh, sweet we peas. have a slide we made. Yes, totally. Here. We forgot. I'll move here, this. let me get this out. Okay, here's a cup. We'll just uh, Thank you. up here. Okay. We did uh, put together it's kind of a generic, non zone based. Um, what can there you we start go. now? Boom. There so you go. just, you know, just kind of a quick visual. Yep, yep. Now, this isn't specific to starting indoors or outdoors. This is just things that you could start. Mm -hmm. I would almost say probably most of these except for a few should be indoor sowed except for maybe like we mentioned coneflowers rubecchia um those probably go outside like you said well but make sure to again check your local climates and the seeds needs and the plants needs um because if you and to make sure that the soil is workable again soil needs to be workable otherwise it's completely frozen you're throwing your seeds on bare ground so but yeah, this is great. Um, yeah, that reminds me, we have delphiniums and cornflowers we can start right mm -hmm. now. Yep, so cool. just uh, just for you guys, you see that up on there. So left-hand side of the screen, flowers. Right-hand side of the screen, vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. So. And artichokes, that's going to be a new one for us this year. Have any of you ever grown artichokes before from seed? Because um, that's kind of fun. Yeah. That sounds really fun. Yeah, I think we bought an artichoke, like, start plant from, like, one of our local nurseries. Ago, yeah. yeah, and we, we tried it. It didn't, it just, I don't think it turned out as well as we wanted it to. I, yeah, <laughs> I think, oh, you know what? No, we harvested some from them. We I think brought we them harvested, in. yeah. yeah we, I don't know did. if we prepared it the right way. Yeah. That was kind of where we went wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, so I'd like to, well, I, I would be like, I'd love to have some that we can harvest and have a few more just go to flower because they're so beautiful. Yep, they're, they are gorgeous just to let to a flower. Totally. And the best thing about like radishes and chard, you can eat the greens on all of those. So that's kind of an extra mm -hmm. bonus, right? Mm -hmm. 
Yep. So, Definitely. Okay. Yeah. And onions. Don't forget onions. I'm, I'm a, I've always been a big onion fan, even growing up. And uh, Allison just uh, recently got reintroduced to, to like onions. onions. And so onions are awesome. And so, okay. So here, we're going to take this off the screen. If you want to see that again, just let us know in the chat and we'll throw it back up there. Yeah, so, there's so many other things that aren't on that list, right? That you could actually, yeah. you could sow. Yeah, depending on your zone again, depending on the plant's needs and how your climate is right now this time of year. So but we're definitely going to grow a bunch of onions this year. Yes. I'm excited. We've yes. always grown, grown green onions, but we're going to try like other varieties. We're going to try yellow onion, yeah. white onion, red onion. There's a cool Cabernet bulb that I want to get from, I think it's Botanical Interests. It might be Baker Creek, I forget. If you guys have ever heard... Maybe you've heard of these, maybe you haven't, but Walla Walla Sweet Onions. Mm -hmm. Legendary yeah, onion. Oh my God. Here so yeah, we're, we're going to try and find those and plant these <laughs> and plant them out here because um, I love onions. Usually they need a sandier soil though, I thought we were... Yeah, they do. They need a really well-draining soil. Um, there's some other uh, needs that they uh, require to really get them to grow well. So yeah. we got to do a little bit of research, make sure that we have um, the environment here for them to grow, especially oh. the, the sun and soil. Water's no problem. <laughs> yeah, we got that. So, but yeah, the sun, soil, we got to figure that out real quick. But it's going to be worth uh, worth trying. It's going to be fun. So the really cool thing is if you think about an onion, it, you know, you can get them really big, right? You buy them in the store, they're huge. Well, each one of those, you can start from seed. That's so cool. And within like, what do we read on a couple of those seed packets? They're, they are not that long. It doesn't it's like a hundred, maybe a yeah. hundred days. And they go from this teeny tiny seed to this big hurricane onion. It's awesome. So anyway. Mm, okay, I'm excited. So good, I know. So one thing, mm. um, if you've been following with us for a while, we usually, we're plants and flowers. That's kind of our thing. We do ornamentals. That's what we know and what we love. Yep. But um, we've never really talked about vegetables as much on our channel or on our blog or our podcast because yep. there's so many amazing vegetable experts out there. Yep. That's not us. There's a lot of great people out there really talking about all that. And so Sean knows the growing um, ins and outs. So yeah. you do have a lot of that education already, but um, we've just never felt comfortable sharing that because we we're very much trial and error you know, vegetable gardeners. Yeah, it, yeah, we are. And it's, it's fun to do though. It it's, it's part of gardening. The, the fun thing is, is that yeah, growing plants uh, in general is pretty much the same, whether mm -hmm. it's uh, for flowers, for ornamental use, or for vegetable use, but there is a difference between growing a plant for the flowers and then growing them for the vegetables, for the crop. And so, um, make sure, excuse me, make sure to keep that in mind when you're growing either or to keep that in mind so you know what to focus on. And so, we are going to try um, our hand in growing a little bit more vegetables lot, this year, yeah, probably a lot more. interspersed in uh, different parts of our garden, but especially in the terrace new terrace project area, yes, we we're, are. we're gonna mix them up. So we're definitely, cool. one thing that's been our problem is we we needed to, we've known this project's coming for a while, mm -hmm. but we've needed to increase our growing space around our property. Okay. We took, we tore out our front uh, lawn a couple years ago and turned it into a complete like front yard garden, which is yep. amazing. Yep. But we need more space for growing. We really don't have that much. So, and it's it's pretty much all taken over by ornamentals because that's what we love. That's what we do. So we are, yeah, like Sean said, we're gonna terrace our entire backyard and add a whole bunch of growing space. Yep. Yeah, we need to. No, wait. We so want to. Yeah, we want to grow our own food. I know. I'm excited too. And gotta we, be creative, right? Yeah, yeah, you gotta use the space that you have. You can go across the space. You can use more terrace space. You can also go vertical. There's I know. See, that's things. something I'm very interested in no. vertical growing yeah. this year. Yeah, we're, we're, we're thinking about more arbors. We're yeah. thinking about more trellises. We're even thinking about pallet space. Using pallets tipped up on their side, and then using different levels. Uh, with soil, so to grow plants, and so I love it's, that idea. yeah. So we got uh, we we all have these options. It's just mm -hmm. uh, how creative can we get, and uh, what are you willing to try? It's totally being creative with the space you have. I yeah. love that, and that's that's really fun to think going forward. That yeah, everybody, every one of us could try something new. And you know what? Totally agree, honey. Yeah, that'd be fun. You know, and here's another thing. So um, as an example, my brother, um, he's got. Um, He's got a house, he's got a backyard, he wants to put a greenhouse in, but he only gets maximum four hours of sunlight um, in the one spot he wants to put it that's available to build a greenhouse. But the cool thing is, is that he doesn't need to get full sun all day long to still grow plants and flowers. There's a lot of plants and flowers, there's a lot of vegetables that don't take or don't need full sun all the time. And so um, you can grow a lot of vegetables like carrots and lettuce and um, some others that will thrive 
in almost full shade, at least in, in our climate, we have different, um, th there's plants out there, there's vegetables out there that'll thrive in full shade areas. That's and so it's super cool, cool because we've got a lot of shade out here in the Northwest. And so, our yard too, our yard is almost yeah. completely surrounded by really old fir, fir trees, very yeah. tall. Yep. So we're lucky we have a big patch in the middle that's pretty sunny, but... Yeah. So, my, the, sorry. The, no, it's, it's fine, it's fine. Um, but no, it's a great example of old tree growth yeah. and, you know, how do I use my, how do I use that space if it's in full shade or partial shade? You have a lot of options, so don't give up, yeah, keep pushing true. forward. Because there's fun. a lot of options. It's really cool. And if you ever want to talk some ideas over with us, just email us at Sean and okay. Allison at SpokenGarden.com because obviously we love talking about this kind of stuff. So let us know how we can help. Yeah, totally, you guys. Just bounce ideas off of anything. Okay. So um, that's pretty much it for winter seed sowing, you guys. Good luck to you. And again, um, yeah. Was there any other questions? Or um, anything not, or not yet. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. cool. Okay. Yeah. Right awesome. I think we... So next up... Yeah, what are we talking about next? I don't know. What is next? What is next? So um, oh. we have, um, in addition to project update of our terrace, we want to show you something kind of cool. And yeah. if you've been watching for a little bit, you might have seen this on a previous it's, video. It's, it's not this we want to show you. I know. <laughs> As we all look at Sean right when we say that. What is he grabbing? What is he grabbing? Not this. So, this isn't what we want. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, we're grabbing it. Yeah. Okay. This we're is excited. what, not Kleenex, but this. So you might have seen us uh, talk about this before. This is our bulb planter or bulb protector. This is our own product. We designed it. Um, it's very bright, but we thought that was cute. This is a 3D print and this is the, the latest version of it. And um, so what we're doing with this, which is super cool, the whole premise of this is basically to protect your bulbs from critters, but mainly squirrels. Mainly squirrels. Because squirrels are little jerks. They <laughs> are so jerks many. to the highest degree. And voles, which we're, we're going to reconfigure this so the holes are a tiny bit smaller, I think. Wasn't that maybe I our next so. design? Yeah, I think so. We've got some input but, from some of yeah. our friends on the East Coast about the yeah. bulbs. Brent and Becky's bulbs. Yeah, Brent and Becky's hey, bulbs. If Brent. you're looking for bulbs, um, they have a large selection, mm -hmm. super easy site to navigate, great pictures, and a lot of inventory. So. Go there, check it out, brentandbeckysbulbs.com. Yep, we love them. So, They're great. And hi, Brent and Becky. Hi, Brent and Becky. <laughs> so, um, yes, so this is our bulb protector, our bulb planter. And so, um, basically what happens is, the whole premise of this is you dig your hole, you put this down on the ground uh, in your hole, and you fill it with some soil. This is about, you know, this is a correct depth for like daffodils and tulips. So. You would uh, tulips wouldn't be though, right? Yeah, tulips. Tulips actually are the ones that we were trying oh, to. Oh, daps are because, not. Yeah, yeah, they don't daps. Have daps. So th there's a couple bulbs out there that squirrels will eat. They will literally chew them down to literally mm -hmm. nothing. So there's other bulbs that they won't eat, but they'll still pull them out and nibble mm -hmm. on them and dislodge them. Our we found those. our bulbs, no, our squirrels, they're little jerks because <laughs> they will pull the bulbs out of the ground, even the daffodils, which they don't eat, and they'll pull them out of the ground and they'll bury their own food right where that <laughs> hole was where we planted our bulb. Isn't that, isn't that mean? Oh my God, it's crazy. And we so, don't see that they eat all over the yard. They don't oh, need yeah. to do that. It's, it's not like they're not starving. No. We, we feed them pretty good, so yeah. But anyway, so they, they'll dislodge other bulbs that they might not eat. So what happens is, is we've come up with this to help protect all those bulbs, make sure they don't get eaten and they don't get dislodged and pulled out of the ground for little jerks to bury their own food. So. <laughs> Um, basically the bulbs go in, uh, you fill it with soil, you put the bulbs in, space them, and then put more soil in there, fill this up, take the top, top, and you just put this on, and then you bury this with just a little bit of soil, maybe some mulch, make sure to keep that layer, make sure to know your depth of what you're doing, at least with the mulch too, and uh, so you don't bury your bulbs too deep, and then the little critters can't get in here, and you know, the, uh, the bulbs grow right up through any of these holes. They, cool? they find their own way. Um, they come up, they do their thing. They're beautiful in your garden. You get to enjoy them. They don't get eaten. They don't get dislodged. Mm -hmm. And, and they're, they're protected all the way around, all the way around them. The, the soil and air and water, the air and water move through and they can go through the bottom, moving up and down. They can also go out to the side, you know? So anyway, so this is our project. The reason we're telling you about this is because we're trying to uh, crowdfund, we are funding a uh, GoFundMe page to um, to ask for donations to get the patent done on this, to get that started. And so we have had, it started, but we need to finish it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. And so we've we've had some amazing people um, donate to us. Um, Anel, my family, 
um, Michelle, Our family, some yeah, friends, yeah, yeah. your mom. Um, so super awesome. Thank you all. I know, we're so, we really so appreciate thankful. it. Um, we still need help though in um, getting to our goal. Uh, we need to get to about fourteen hundred dollars. We're at about six hundred, so we got a little ways to go. We need to make sure that we get those funds and, and raise those funds by the end of February. And we're coming up on that. So five dollars, ten dollars, anything that you could donate to help us do this, uh, to get this uh, funded, to get the patent on this, would be awesome. And this has been a dream of mine for a very long time. And now it's both our dream to get this. Uh, patented to produce this to get this out to people to help them protect their bulbs. I it's mean, been so awesome watching Sean create this. He figured out how to use all this software and <laughs> we sent a way to have it. Design software. This was actually version two. The first version he made was a little. Oh, version three. It's okay. The first one was quite a bit larger. And we should give a quick backstory. There are some products on the market similar to this, but this is totally different. Yeah. This is round, um, which there maybe are one or two other round ones, but not out of this material. They don't have a top. And our, and our top screw on, the other ones are just baskets that are wide open on yep, top. Yeah, wide open. And eventually, um, our goal is to make these completely out of plastic bottle caps. Yeah, recycled, recycled plastic bottle, bottle caps. caps. Yeah, so, like, like this cap. This is a certain type of plastic, ABS, and it's a highly, highly <coughs> um, polluted uh, piece of plastic yeah. around, um, around the world. I mean, uh, this is something that gets into the microplastics and, and it, it breaks just, it, down and it's, just, it's just in the ocean well, forever. It's nasty. So eventually we want to be able to make this out of these to help take care of that environmental impact. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, if you go to our GoFundMe page, um, I can't remember, I do you have a link? Yeah. But yeah, we, we'd appreciate any donation that you can make. Just, we need your guys' help to get this done because, um, it's, it's an amazing product and uh, we're so excited. We want to get this to market in the next couple of years. Do, what, or a couple what's the, years out. What's the um, well, it's kind of what long. About? Um, so it's probably gofundme.com. Spoken. Yeah. But it's, it's in the chat. And oh, it's in the chat. Yeah, and okay. we'll drop in it. It's sorry. It's a very long, it's a, it's a long, it's one. a little too long to read, okay. but, um, it's there in the chat yeah. and, um, Thank you all for considering and listening yeah. to us um, talk explain. about our, our product. This is we're so fun. excited. Ah! Yeah. So cool. So yeah, thank you guys. I'm gonna put this on. Okay, so moving on. Moving on, um, real quick because we are gonna run it up on an hour here. Oh my gosh. Um, we can talk and talk. We love to talk. We like to talk. About so we were wondering what's growing or is there anything flowering in your garden right now? We have. Um, one of our favorite winter blooming plants, which we're going to show you. We're going to show you. We actually just highlighted it yesterday on our Friday plant oh, chat. Sorry, before we go. Oh, I forgot. There, we there's, have our, there's our GoFundMe slide um, for our flower bulb protector. We got ahead of ourselves. Totally yeah, we did. That. Sorry about that, guys. So, yeah, you can see it right there. That's what's going to look like when you go to it. Um, really would appreciate your help. So, there we go. So Thank you. Yeah. So thank you for that. And here's our next slide. Bloomers this week. Um, look at those hellebores. Oh my gosh. I really want to add more hellebores, hellebores over the next couple of years because there's some beautiful cultivars. Yep, there are. And there, it has such, especially the Lenten Rose, it has um, a lot of options for flower color, mm. which other, uh, other hellebores don't. So, so what you're looking at here, the bottom two photos on the left and right there are both um, varieties or cultivars, sorry, of Lenten Rose. Um, the one on the left there, the darker kind of burgundy, beautiful one is called Ice and Roses Red Hellebore. And unfortunately, the beautiful one on the right, we don't have the info. We didn't keep it. So it's, we're not sure the exact cultivar. It's about three years old. Yeah. Four years it's, old. It's really big. It's it needs really to be divided. Big. I love so, that idea of dividing it. That's okay. going to be fun. Yep. The one on the left there is a newer one. I think it's coming up on a year old. Yeah. It's very young still. It's very yep. immature. Yep. We just talked about Lenten Rose, like I said yesterday. So if you have Lenten Rose or you want to learn more about it, um, we just posted the video kind of talking about care and just some other fun facts. Yep. So. That was our plant chat yesterday. That was a plant chat. And then the top picture there are our primroses, which we kind of have a bunch of different colors <laughs> and they're starting to bloom. We've had a problem with slugs because it's been so mild here this winter so far. Yes, yes. So, and we didn't realize it until it was too late. So a lot of our primroses just got attacked. So we're kind of slowly getting those rehabbed and... Great, the great thing about primroses though is they're super tough. Um, excuse me. They like to grow in understories and shaded areas of... Basically they evolve in forested areas and the undergrowth of, of old forests. So they like uh, shade. They come in so many really different do. colors. Oh my God. 
Um, they come in almost every color of the rainbow. And then there's also multiple colored uh, flowers. Um, so yeah, they're a beautiful plant. Um, there's a couple different what they call strains, and that's the difference in sizes they come in. But yeah, gorgeous plant. So beautiful. So. Anything that blooms in the winter is just fun anyway, right? Because then you just you just have that color that you're not expecting, and then it just shows up. Yep. And when your garden's kind of gray and dark, and then you just have Green pops of come color. Out and go. Surprise! And hello, boards too. <laughs> so fun. Yep. So what do you guys have growing? Let us know in the chat or in the description, yes. or, or sorry, in the comments. Um, yeah, we always love to hear that. Oh, totally. But other than that, that's pretty much it for this week. We had a quick video roundup in case you missed it, and we wanted to do a garden Q and A. So maybe yeah, let's do let's do the this past week's videos really here. quick. If you missed any so, of these, we'd love to hear if you have any questions or comments. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, we did a side garden cleanup uh, last Sunday, um, and then we uh, did a. Uh, Winter seed sowing in the greenhouse on Tuesday. That was fun. That was fun. Yep. We did some behind the scenes of our uh, part of our book coming up. We did we pruned some one of our azaleas that definitely off season, but yeah. it's it needed to be done. Yeah. If you haven't watched that video, the takeaway is is you can still prune uh, during off season when you're not really supposed to prune. It's just be aware. Don't prune so much that you stimulate the plant to grow in the cold season, um, and um, you want to really prune the plant right after it flowers. So that's kind of a general sense of pruning anyway. So, but if you want to know more, watch that video. And, and uh, let us know if you have any questions yeah, or comments, definitely, definitely. And then like we just said, our Lenten Rose Hellebore plant chat. So that was a lot of fun. It's awesome. So um, yeah, that was great. We have some really fun videos coming up this week. Yeah. So as always, we're, we love to film and just be outside. So why not you yeah. Know, yeah. share well, it with you guys? Share it with you guys. Yeah. yeah. So. So real quick, um, kind of our end, we want to get this into being more of our kind of main content, but um, we want to take garden questions from you guys. And you, it's, you've had some awesome questions in the chat so far, so thank you for that. That, that really helps <coughs> us um, connect with you and help you out. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's so, what we're here to do. Yeah, definitely. So we, we took some questions straight from videos in the past week. Um, so one of the first questions, what do, what do I put in my greenhouse? I... This um, this person got a brand new greenhouse, oh, I believe, for Christmas. So right? awesome, yeah! So Christmas cool, present. and um, so cool. they they're not really sure they're new to gardening and they don't really know what to do. Yeah. So what would we tell them? Um, uh, if it was me, I mean, it just depends on what your plans are for the next for this next year for gardening. I mean, greenhouses are great for all sorts of different things, um, but you can hold plants over in them, um, especially if they're not exactly cold hardy to your uh, to your region if they're really tender and they're in pots you can take them and put them in your greenhouse keep them protected that way um because you'll get that extra heat uh, residual heat from the day and the greenhouse will heat up uh, you can also start seeds early um, like right now the the seed sowing uh, that's happening with a lot of people right now to get ahead of the spring season greenhouses are great for that greenhouses are great for not just also getting ahead of the spring season but the summer season the fall season you know, different seasons have different uh, plants that you can actually sow seeds prior to. So greenhouses are great for that. Yeah. yeah. And then also, if you just want to grow like plants that you normally wouldn't grow in your area, that can't grow in your area because they're either not hardy or uh, for some other reason, they just won't grow in your area, put them in the greenhouse. You know, grow tropical plants, grow indoor plants. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of like jade plants and Sansevieria, uh, mother-in-law's tongue. Um, even your poinsettias, I mean, if you have nowhere else to put them, especially in your climate, they won't survive in your climate uh, during different times of year, put them in the greenhouse. It's great. I love that idea. Yeah, keep them beautiful, keep them growing, um, keep them healthy. Yeah, so greenhouses are awesome. That's so cool. Um, Delphina, hi, good morning. Hi, Delphina. She just uh, mentioned that um, they still have fern leaf lavender growing in their zone 10B yard. Ooh, fern leaf lavender, awesome. I was just mentioning, that is so on our yeah, list. It it's is. so beautiful. We want to add that to our garden. We're trying to figure out where to find it. Did you grow it from seed or did you get it as a starter or a plant? Oh, yeah. So we'd love to hear any tips you have on fern leaf lavender because yeah. we definitely want to. Awesome. Yeah. They're a beautiful plant. Oh, they're and so beautiful. They're lavender, so why wouldn't you want I mean, we love lavender, but just the, the lacy leaves are just, or the foliage is so unusual. So different from regular lavender. Other lavender. So, another question. Another why, question. somebody asked earlier this week, why do we spread and use vermiculite over the top of our, like, seed sowing? Um, some people do that. Some people do that. Some people don't. Um, it's a 
well-used method to literally have your have your seat tray. Here, let's have a seat tray. I can show you. Oops, dropped it. Whatever. <laughs> so basically, you got your seat tray. You put your um, uh, seed sowing material in here, like potting soil or seed sowing uh, soil in here, and then you put your seed on there, right? Well, if you don't want to do anything else with the seed, like push it down in or cover it with regular soil that you have in here, the soil you have in here, you take vermiculite and you put either um, a very light layer over it or a thick layer over it, depending on the seed and how big it is, and um, you use that as to cover the seed. So um, you have a better uh, germination rate. It's, it's actually good to use vermiculite to get a better germination rate because you do get that coverage of the seed, which most seeds do need um, to, uh, to germinate. They need, they need that darkness, um, that lack of light. Uh, but they also need something up against it to hold moisture against the seed to then have the seed absorb that soil or absorb that water and then activate germination. Um, and so vermiculite's good for that darkness um, and covering the seed and then keeping moisture tight around that seed if you're not gonna press them down in or cover them with more soil. And it's a nice easy way to do it. You just basically um, take your seed, put it on the soil, and then you don't do anything else with it. You take the vermiculite and sprinkle it over depending on how thick you need to put it. And uh, then you water it in and you just keep that water to keep that moist. And it's a great way to just get a good germination rate. Awesome. So, yeah. Yeah, we like it. It worked for us, for us very well the last few years, so. Yeah. There's a lot of growers that use that method too in the wholesale industry, so. Awesome. Yeah, I have some experience in yeah. wholesale greenhouse operations. And they use um, pretty good. So. Uh, next question, could you do a, vi could we do a video on winter sowing using the milk chuck? Milk jug method. I can talk. Sure. So yeah, I think we were we're yeah. kind of excited to try that yeah. this year. Always excited about experiments. So that's a yes. Find new stuff. Yeah. We're we just definitely gotta find gonna some do that. Jugs. We need to get some. Yeah. Some Milk jugs. We need to gather some Water plastic. Jugs, whatever. We, we just don't find. have a lot of plastic containers. So yeah. we, I'm gonna. We'll ask around. Yeah. We'll ask. Ask some family members. We'll ask some family members. Yeah. yeah. So. And last cool. question. There were a lot of other questions, but we just pulled a few out. Um. Do you have a Patreon link? So. Interesting. Okay, full disclosure, we do have a Patreon. Um, it's yeah, we don't use it. If we don't use it. It's it's really hard to keep that up with everything else we're doing. So well, and it um, asks people. I didn't realize that like audience members had to like create an account to yeah. get in. I don't like that. To, you have to become like That's... part of the system, get an account and stuff. So yeah, yeah we didn't realize that when we set it up. No, we so didn't. It we're, was, we're not using that yeah, anymore. So yeah, we set that up early this spring. It's just not good for us, but. Allison found us something much, much better. You know, I found this fun one. It just kind of popped up in, you know, like an ad on mm -hmm. social media. Of course, they always know what you want. <laughs> um, so it is scary. But um, it's called Buy Me a Coffee, I think. Buymeacoffee.com. And it's just coffee. a place to go. And this was a direct answer to this audience question. Um, mm -hmm. So we don't have Patreon, but we do have Buy Me, Buy Me a Coffee. Com, and it's just under Spoken Garden. Please. So, yeah. thank you for asking that. That We really appreciate that. And, and now, what's the premise behind Buy Me a Coffee? It's, it's, to... it's kind of a place where people could support um, other account, other like creators. So I it's guess. for people that make YouTube videos, podcasts, yeah. um, blog posts, um, people that create some kind of online content for their audience. Mm -hmm. It's a place for audience members to basically sh kind of show their things. Okay. Maybe, you know, kind of support monthly or just a one-time. Can they share comments? Can they ask questions? I think so. There? Yeah. Cool. They, okay. There's a little interactive part of that. Awesome. So what, what's the, what's the address? On uh, buymeacoffee.com. That's simple. I know. Cool. And by the way, tea, coffee, buy us a coffee. Oh, geez. It'd be fun. Um, um, last note, <laughs> Sherry, thank you for the, she said she bought water jugs for 89 cents. Oh, cool. Cause okay. I was kind of thinking right. that too, those water ones, they sell, they're pretty cheap. Yeah. So and we can use the water around the yard or do you know, something with it, right? Just, you always need water. I just thought of something. We could take those, buy those, and then take the water, put it in our rain we barrel. We could put it in our rain barrel. We can cheat. <laughs> <laughs> we can use it later. Yeah. That's a great like savings program. <laughs> I like that. So that's exactly what I was thinking, Sherry, is that, yeah, we'll just go buy. We have some um, on our RV. They're not here. But, yeah, we will 
Because you want that surface area, right? You, we need yeah. more space. Yeah, space is good. Space is good. So yeah. anyway, with cool. that, I think we should wrap this up. Okay, yeah, we've been going. Oh, wow. You know what? You wow. guys, thank you for staying with us. Yeah. We keep going, and we do, We just laugh, we and we don't even talking. know what we're talking about. <laughs> we don't know. Time. We can keep talking about all this. I know. <laughs> we are so excited for those of you that joined us in the chat and yeah. just... Came, came and hang out with or talk, came and hung out with we're us. We're excited. It's, it's, it's great to have you guys here. So much fun to yeah. connect with you guys. This has been like the best part about these lives. Really, totally. Yeah. We can't wait to be back here with you next Saturday. Yeah, we want to do more. We, we're not really sure what we're talking about from week to week, but no, um, we'll come up with some kind of topic. If you have ideas oh, about yeah, what to talk about, even read in the comments. We we want to want to talk about what you guys want to talk about too it's just not all about us it's about you guys it's about us together yeah um so yeah let us know down in the comments yeah we would yeah. love to hear that because that's fun and um last comment barb good morning barb oh hey barb and like like us she doesn't have the water jug so she's just oh. using plastic water bottles that she collected from other people cool. so that's a great idea Woohoo. yep that's awesome we're kind of doing a, gonna do a blend of that I believe. yeah you gotta use what you got gotta use what yeah. you got as long as they're transparent so Yep. Sunlight can penetrate and kind of create that mini greenhouse. So anyway, um, you guys have a wonderful weekend. Have a great day. Get out you in guys. your garden and enjoy it, even yep. though some of you might have snow, but maybe well, there's. You can still get outside and enjoy it. Yeah. Maybe watch the, the wildlife or I don't know, do yeah. something fun like that, and have a wonderful weekend. Yep. Have a great day, everybody. We will see you in video form tomorrow, and we'll be live with you next Saturday. Yep. Definitely. And we always post every day on Instagram as well. So oh, yeah. you can catch us there too. Yeah. So, so bye you guys. Bye guys.